as Sebastian Gorka, immediately regrets it. Yesterday one of Trump's top aides, Sebastian Gorka joined CNN's Anderson Cooper to talk foreign policy. The interview was about to be about Trump's Paris trip, but Anderson tried to catch Gorka off guard with the usual BS questions you've come to expect from CNN, Russia this, Russia that blah blah. Then Gorka made Anderson immediately regret it and destroyed him on live TV. Gorka pointed out that Anderson's nonsense questions are the reason Tucker Carlson gets nearly 10 times more viewers. He said that CNN's BS fake news are the reason they get lower ratings than Nickelodeon cartoon reruns. He also exposed Anderson for being owned by corporate sponsors who want to destroy Trump. I'm sad to see CNN fall to this. I know you want salacious, sensational coverage for your ratings so your corporate sponsors and owners will have more money, but that's not media that's not reportage. Ouch. However, he didn't stop there. Let's let the views judge, WHO have now decided that you're in 13th place in national ratings behind Nick at Night, a cartoon channel, lol. Tucker Carlson gets 4 million views, you barely scratch 200,000. Ha ha. People would now rather watch cartoon reruns than CNN. Can't say I'm too surprised, because that's what happens when all you produce is very fake news. Here are the 24 Republicans that voted to make Uncle Sam pay for transgender surgeries. The Republican-controlled government should have reined in some of their excessive, insane, Obama-era policies. On Thursday, the House of Representatives voted 214-209 reject an amendment to the National Defense Authorization Act NDA, that would prevent the Pentagon from paying for hormone therapy and surgeries for transgender individuals. This is horrible. Democrats have said that the proposal is bigoted and unconstitutional. They won support from 24 GOP lawmakers to scuttle the amendment to the defense policy, according to Washington Post. Here are the 24 Republicans that voted to defeat this bill and keep transgenderism in the military, compiled by the Gateway Pundit, Amash Me 3 RD District Bergman Me 1st District Coffin CO 6th District Comstock VA 10th Cook California 8th District Costello Pa 6th District Corbello FL 26th District Dehum California 10th District Dent Pa 15th District Faso NY 19th District Fitzpatrick Pa 8th District Tissa California 49th District Catco NY 24th District Knight California 25th District Lance and J 7th Libiendo and J 2nd Mc Arthur and J. 3rd Mast FL 18 3rd and Y. 23rd District Rikert Wa 8th District Roz Ledin and FL 27th District Shuster Pa 9th District Stefanik and Y. 21st District Tenny and Y. 101st. You heard that right here. These are the Republicans that voted to keep transgenderism in the military. Share this if you think that we should not have transgenderism in the military. If the left is so worried about Russia, then why are they making our fighting force weaker with this crap? I tease over after the media lied about Trump, Lou Dobbs went on TV and leaked their worst nightmare. President Trump's trip to France over the past couple days has been a huge success, so the media is trying to distract everyone. They continued to spread conspiracy theories and lies about Trump and Russia. This week it was Don Jr.'s meeting with a Russian lawyer, next week it will be something else. Well, Lou Dobbs has had enough. He just went on live TV and exposed the media's worst nightmare. Dobbs exposed how the deep state was secretly using the liberal media to try and overthrow Trump. He explained how they are accelerating leaks from within the top levels of government in order to saturate the media with Trump scandals and try to break the will of the American people. Then they'll move in and try and have him removed. Here's an excerpt. This is an effort by the deep state to roll over a duly elected president. And to break the will of the American people. This is about a full-on assault by the left, the Democratic Party to carry out a coup d'etat against President Trump. Aided by the left-wing media. Immediately after spotting U.S. troops in French parade, Trump did something jaw-dropping. President Donald Trump blessed Bastille Day with his presence. 
Bastille Day commemorates the 100th anniversary of America entering World War I. Watch the amazing moment below when Trump arrived at the parade. There is a second even better video at the bottom of the article just so you know. Saker Blue. Trump and Melania look so wonderful in France. They are so classy. Then everyone noticed the amazing thing that Trump did when he saw U.S. troops in the parade. It's incredible. Trump was the only one seen saluting as the U.S. troops went by in the presidential box. The two men can be seen talking at U.S. and French fighter jets flew overhead. There were eight U.S. planes in the parade as well as a 145 U.S. troops on the ground, according to the Sacramento Bee. Trump and Melania have stood up for the American people since they have been elected. They have taken so many barbs for us. Share this if you are so proud of our president for respecting our troops. God bless our troops and our president. Hell no George Bush and Bill Clinton just teamed up to do the unthinkable to Trump. I gonna be totally honest with you folks. I don't think that there are many people left who would list the last few decades of American presidents as positive. You have some of the worst leaders in U.S. history, Obama, Bush, and Clinton, who all put us in a world of SHT, just look at North Korea. Well, now two of those dummies, Bush Jr. and Bill Clinton, decided to work together to take down President Donald Trump. At the Presidential Leadership Conference in Dallas, they did something very bad. The two clowns teamed up last night to publicly lecture Donald Trump on humility. That's right. Humility is in red for a reason. I just think it's funny that George W. Bush and Bill Clinton of all people would be going after Donald Trump for humility of all things. Hey, ex-President Clinton. Do you really think we forgot about this? Tell me, is that what passes for humble these days? Or maybe a BJ doesn't count as sexual relations for a guy like Bill. Oh, and don't think I forgot about you, ex Pres Bush. You want to lecture Trump about being humble. I seem to remember a little something you did as president. What mission was it, George? It certainly wasn't beating extremists. We are still dealing with them. Clearly, these guys should have practiced what they preached. I don't know what the future holds for President Trump, but I'm sure he will handle it just fine. Trouble in Paradise Jeff Sessions just laid the smackdown on the state of Hawaii. Attorney General Jeff Sessions releases statements after Hawaii judge puts new limits on the Trump administration's travel ban from six Muslim countries. The judge is now allowing entry of grandparents, grandchildren and other family members into the United States. In the order issued last Thursday, Federal District Court Judge Derek Watson also found that any refugee with ties to resettlement organizations in the U.S. that are able to receive them should be exempt from the travel ban. Jeff Sessions speaks about the travel ban that Supreme Court rules on in June before the Supreme Court went into recess reinstated the travel from six Muslim-majority countries Iran, Syria, Libya, Somalia, Sudan and Yemen but with some restrictions that those who have bona fide relationships with Americans in the U.S. can still come in. The Trump administration said that would include parents, spouses, fiancés, sons, daughters, sons-in-law, daughters-in-law or siblings. But the government excluded grandparents and grandchildren from its definition of close family, along with brothers-in-law, sisters-in-law, aunts, uncles, nieces, nephews and cousins, in the ruling that you can read here, Judge Watson did not accept that. After the ruling Attorney General Jeff Sessions have set his sights on the Hawaii judge and all those who blocked the administration's effort to keep the country safe he said the following, these leftist judges need to be held accountable for the damage they are causing and their obstruction. A country that doesn't have a government that can function is no country at all. Share this report 10,000 in support of President Trump and Attorney General Jeff Sessions' fight to make America safe again. This top DHS agent just pointed out what Trump just quietly did to our border. It's incredible. 
Top officials at the Department of Homeland Security says that the agency will start deploying their new computer system in early 2018 to detect visa overstays of foreign workers and temporary workers that fail to depart the U.S. on time. I expect by early next year you would start to deploy this at a lot of the major airports, John Vognor, the Deputy Executive Assistant Commissioner of U.S. Customs and Border Protection said at a Senate hearing on Wednesday. Watch John Wagner testimony here, the release of the new system is being driven by President Donald Trump who signed an executive order in January telling DHS to quickly deploy a biometric entry and exit tracking systems at airports to be used by U.S. Customs in the United States. Once deployed, it will allow immigration officers to quickly identify overstays for incentivized departures. The new system pairs names and photographs to record the arrival and departure of people via the nation's airports. When people don't depart on time, the system can notify the agency that the person is overstaying their visa. The pending system is slated for use at airports. Officials are testing the system at several airports in Washington, D.C., Boston, Chicago, Atlanta, Houston, Atlanta, and New York City. The DHS recently revealed that more than 730,000 individuals overstayed their visas in 2016. Roughly 60 million foreigners to visited and departed the country on visas that year. President Trump talks about making America worker first. If you agree with the new system being set in place to find and deport visa overstayers and put American workers first, share this one million.